the essence of an explorer spirit rests in everlasting curiosity and quest for answers. It is a travesty not to share in the knowledge acquired during such adventures. When one person, for whatever reason, has a chance to lead an extraordinary life, he or she has no right to keep it for themselves. Jacques-Yves Cousteau he was just such a person, an adventurer, a pioneer, an inventor, and he inspired hundreds of millions of people for over 50 years all around the world through the lens of documentary filmmaking. My name is Fabien Cousteau, and he was my grandfather. And with this, I grew up in a very unusual situation that gave me a foray and a, a real appreciation for the undersea world and what that means to all of us here on the land based. As a family growing up in places such as the Amazon River here with a Cayman or Papua New Guinea or other things, it's a real privilege to be able to bring back these very unique experiences to the rest of the world. But up until recently, we were only able to do that through traditional medium. And to highlight the human ocean connection is of paramount importance. Diving gives us a four-way into the undersea world, but it also has an Achilles heel, which is the lack of time. Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea gave me an idea. Why not give us back that luxury of time by living at the bottom of the sea and exploring that world in an unprecedented way? So I decided to lead a mission called Mission 31 to bring my team to live and work underwater for a full 31 days in the world's only undersea marine laboratory. Why would I do this? Because it affords us the luxury of time to reach unique and alien places in a way that we never were able to do so before. As we moved in, a school of eagle rays, which are normally pelagics or traveling animals, ended up sticking around for the full 31 days to see what we were doing. Now, we were able to use some cutting-edge technology to get better insight and go farther, deeper, and longer, such as this Didson handheld sonar device that gave us, with a heads-up display, a view of things that were just invisible in the dark. Now, Beyond that, we're also able to use the Pulse Amplitude Modulated Fluorometer, <laughs> or PAM for short, which gives us a real-world pulse of how coral reefs are doing in the face of climate change, acidification, and, of course, pollution issues. Such a long period of time working down below, we also had to monitor ourselves, and our scientists and myself were able to use consumer accessible gear such as this Muse which gives us stress levels and exhaustion as well of course as our very own pulse. And the reward for all of this is being able to share this adventure and the discoveries with things such as cutting-edge prototype high-speed edgetronic cameras conceived at M by M MIT engineers. This gives us a, a new and interesting perspective on what animals do in blink of an eye. And, of course, we were able to get access to the very rare, top-of-the-line 6K Red Dragon camera, capable of shooting eight times the quality of HD. This really does give us a real-world perspective in a way that's never been done before. For the first time, we were able to invite the world live for the first time on a Cousteau expedition. Yes, live from the bottom of the sea. And we had cameras spitting out this imagery from inside the habitat as well as outside and on our very own helmet cams. So the luxury of time. This is a screen grab that gives us an idea of the fascinating dynamics that happen only when we're not around, unless you have the luxury of time down below and are able to capture those things if you're lucky enough while they're happening. And of course, because we had Wi-Fi, we were able to do up to 12 Skype in the classrooms a day when we're not diving. And that gives us a real uh, ability to share with young people what's happening down below. We could even beam those images up to the net and to our website in real time. And to reach beyond our little circles, we enlisted the help of some of our friends, which much bigger social circles than we do, such as Holt McCallany, Adrian Grenier, 
Ian Summerholder, and many others who are kind enough to help bring that human ocean connection to their circles. And when the team and I finally got a chance to sit down at night and the world was just looking in at us, even the fish, uh, this is such an out-of-body experience that we couldn't help but be fascinated and trade our sleep for observation. And so here we are on day 31, Deco Day, where we pay, pay back our credit that we borrowed to decompress for over 18 and a half hours so that we can rejoin the surface. And during this process, I realized that this was not the end of Mission 31, but the beginning of Beyond Mission 31. And my simple hope was proven true. People still are riveted by the mysteries of the ocean world. And encouraged by this and Mission 31's success, a documentary film will be produced, a museum exhibit will be created, and an ocean learning center will be opened to continue the human-ocean connection. Thank you all very much.